Hello and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker. All of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are available continuously, effortlessly, and naturally to every Christian. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11 really reveals the ninefold manifestation wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. But the Holy Spirit has much more than he wa- that he wants to share with all believers, and he's ready to fill them with overflowing. Mark Verkler has authored more than 55 books in the area of hearing God's voice and spirit anointed living. His works include Four Keys keys to Hearing God's Voice, Counseled by God, Your your Extraordinary Life, and Prayers that Heal the Heart. Charity Verkler Kayembe has worked with her family in ministry for 25 years and holds advanced degrees in biblical studies. Charity has been featured on CBN, Sid Ross, Supernatural, Charisma, and The Elijah List. Her books include Hearing God Through Your Dreams, Everyday Angels, and Unleashing Your Healing Power Through Spirit-Born Emotions. You can find out more about them at cwgministries.org. Joining us now to talk about their new book, uh, entitled Overflow of the Spirit, How to Release His Gifts in Every Area of Your Life, are Mark Verkler Verkler and his co-author, Charity Verkler Kayembe. Mark and Charity, welcome to Revealing the Truth. Thank you very much. It's good to be with you. Well, it's wonderful to have you both. Uh, Charity, uh, you have uh, joined join the family ministry and uh, uh, walked in this spirit-filled life for uh, probably as far back as you can remember. Uh, but uh, we always like to ask the question, uh, especially in this relationship of a family working together that you were surrounded by it all your life but was there a point in your experience which it moved from being the faith of the family to your own personal faith yeah, that happened to me at age 15. I, that's when I accepted, accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Uh, and that was a definite, distinctive transformation in my life at that point in time. Okay, and Charity, what about you being surrounded by it? Um, yeah, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was seven. And uh, so then I, you know, Dad taught us how to hear God um, through journaling, to, to see visions, to interpret dreams. So I kind of just took off from there. I started pretty young. So when, when um, Mark, you uh, were raised in the church? Yes, I was raised in the church. Mm-hmm. Okay, and were you denominationally affiliated? Yep, a very conservative fundamentalist denomination that did not believe, uh, didn't teach on the Holy Spirit, didn't believe in the voice of God, didn't believe in miracles, dreams, healing. They believed in dispensationalism, which is that none of this stuff could happen in this dispensation. So that was my foundational belief when I got saved. So that's the experience of uh, what, uh, I'm gonna throw a number out there and maybe you can verify it. About 90% of the churches um, have uh, become so focused on a Jesus only narrative that the Holy Spirit has been relegated to a uh, mysterious, uh, supernatural, um, intangible, uh, not as it was given to us. And God, the Father, has been relegated to a supporting role. Uh, he might get uh, the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor uh, in a uh, uh, story that lasted 6,000 years. Charity, while we have a calm moment, um, let me get your observations as to what you've seen in uh, denominational Christianity as to uh, what I myself, as a Pentecostal, charismatic, spirit-filled Jewish man, uh, believe in every word of the Bible, 
which includes a very active uh, presence and operation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what's been your experience as you've been out there speaking, as you've been out there exposed to denominational Christianity that uh, kind of... Um, <laughs> Hold on, we're, we're getting that. Uh, I don't know how to how to filter that out. Okay, there we go. We got a break. So, uh, Charity, what's been your observation? Well, I believe that we all, as followers of Jesus, we want to live like Jesus. We know He's our example. He's our model, and we want. We know He said we can do the what He did in greater works. Um, the problem is if we leave Holy Spirit out of the equation, we're not going to get those greater works because we know it was because he was anointed um, by the Holy Spirit that was he was able to do everything that he did. Um, and it's really interesting if we look at um, when the Holy Spirit baptized Jesus, three significant things happened and he is our model. And so whatever happened to Jesus when he was baptized by Holy Spirit, that's what we can expect to happen for us. And we know the story in, in Mark 1. It says, you know, that heavens were opened. He saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. And he heard his father's voice saying, you are my beloved son and you are my well pleased. And then he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Well, those are three unique things. Because that's the first time we have a record anywhere in the Bible of Jesus seeing anything from heaven. And he's seeing the heavens open. He's seeing Holy Spirit come. So now he's seeing into heaven. And then he's hearing from heaven. He's hearing his father's voice. And this is actually the first record we have anywhere in scripture of Jesus hearing anything from heaven. So now he's seeing in heaven, he's hearing from heaven. So what happens? Now he can be led by heaven. He's led by the spirit into the wilderness. So the same is what we can expect for us. When we're baptized by Holy Spirit, that opens our spiritual eyes to the supernatural realm of heaven. So now we can see what Father is doing. We can hear his voice, and then we can be led to do what he is doing, the greater works. It's interesting that, that you um, look to the New Testament. The first instance that we have of, of a record of uh, what we know today to be, in the Greek, the paraclete, uh, was really recorded in Numbers chapter 11 as Moses stands before God and says this is too much for me to handle uh, if I have to do this by myself and God says gather together 70 of your elders and I'll take up my spirit which is on you and I will share it with them and uh, the 70 elders are now uh, spirit filled they prophesy and they are out healing in the camp, and that narrative is in Numbers chapter 11, 26. Moses prayed uh, a prayer that was actually answered in Acts chapter 2. And when you look at the context of this connection point, Moses was the first one to pray that the Spirit would be available to everyone. And we see that activated in Acts chapter 2. So this is a very uh, interesting concept of the infilling of the Holy Spirit and what is associated with that, which are two of the very transparent gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are prophesying and healing. And this was demonstrated uh, in uh, the wilderness uh, in Numbers chapter 11. Uh, people are mystified by the gifts. And Paul states that uh, not everyone has these gifts, but they should seek after the higher gifts. And this is something that I think that uh, people have stopped doing. It's been stopped being taught and preached and presented to them that this was the model, that you have... Uh, uh, come to faith, and that there is more to it than just salvation. There's more to it than just uh, repentance. There is this ongoing uh, 
uh, horizontal relationship. Your vertical relationship with God is secured through salvation, but now there's this horizontal life that we have to live. We're left here to live out in the fullness of uh, a spirit-filled life, which is for the individual and for the body at large. Mark, where do we start drifting away from teaching this model that God so clearly laid out early on in the book of Numbers and then the fulfillment in Acts chapter 2 in what happened in the upper room and how uh, Peter uh, and uh, the uh, disciples in the upper room uh, were praying in the spirit and people heard them praying in their own language. Uh, this was what brought and reversed the 3,000 that died at the giving of the law, the 3,000 Jewish people that were saved at giving of the Spirit. We see that there was something significantly important for God to move on that day of Pentecost, which was the Feast of Weeks in Leviticus 23. Uh, why did we start moving away from that. It, it is fundamental to the teachings of Paul. It's fundamental to the teachings of God. Yeah. Well, the Apostles' Creed doesn't have much to say about the Holy Spirit. All it says is six words. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And I thought, huh, that's all we can cough up? You know, I mean, excuse me. I, I got a list of 70 things in our book that the Holy Spirit does in relationship with us. And they obviously knew that. How, why couldn't they articulate even one of those things the Holy Spirit said, even in the Apostles' Creed. And then you come, of course, to the Reformation, you know, the, the rationalism sweeping through Europe between 1200 and 1500, you know, AD. And, and now we live in a rational culture which has just removed completely any encounter with the Holy Spirit. And if anybody wants one, they need to go obviously to the Pentecostals or the Charismatics or the New Age or or, or to a satanic worship, because they all believe in, in spirit encounter. And, you know, when I hungered for that as a, ba as a baby Christian, first thing I noticed was, hey, Jesus and everybody in the Bible heard the voice of God from Genesis to Revelation. They heard his voice. So I asked people, well, how do you hear God's voice? And you know what? They couldn't answer the question. I mean, the most they could say is, well, you know, you just know that you know. I said, no, I don't know, which is why I'm asking you, how do you hear God's voice? And no one could spit out of their mouth a definition, a working definition for how I could actually hear the voice of the Spirit. So how could I possibly walk by the Spirit, live by the Spirit, operate in any of the nine gifts of manifestation of the Spirit if I can't even define what his voice sounds like? So finally, the Lord had me take a year of my life to focus on that. And, and I came up with a simple definition based on John chapter seven. He said, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water, this he spoke with the spirit. So I realized, and the Lord showed me, he said, hey, when you tune to flowing thoughts, it's coming from the river within that flows. When you tune to flowing pictures, it's coming from the river within the flows. So a flowing picture would be a vision from God. A flowing thought would be the voice of God. And Jesus lived out of those two all the time. He said, I only do what I hear my father speaking and see my father doing. And now that I've defined what hearing and seeing is like, hearing is fixing my eyes on Jesus, asking him for input, tuning to flowing thought, and believing in faith that there is a river that flows and that flowing thought that came to me was coming from the river, or asking him for a vision, having a picture light up on my mind through flow and believing that's a vision from God. So that's steps of understanding and steps of faith that I had to take. It took me 10 years of my Christian life to take those steps because no one could even say what I just said. And all they could say was, you know, you, you know that you know that you know. And I said, you know what? That doesn't help me because I don't know. So we can't even define how to have spirit encounter. So how is it possible for the church who hungers for it to walk in it because we can't even define it? What's so fascinating to me is, as, a, as and I, I came to faith out of the synagogue I, <clears throat> at the age of 44. So as I'm reading the New Testament for the first time and I read about an encounter that Rabbi Nicodemus has with Jesus, 
and remembering in context there is no New Testament at the time of this encounter. So we're reading uh, a report of an encounter that happened before this document we call the New Testament. So in this period of time that of Jesus' ministry, there is no record, there is no New Testament. And he talks about that what's born of the flesh is flesh and what's born of the spirit is spirit. So there has to be a new birth. There has to be, you can't break through your mother's water uh, a second time, but you can be born of the spirit. Now, in principle, people don't really see that, um, first of all, this is a, an Aramaic conversation and the illustration of breaking through your mother's water uh, is exactly how the earth was born. The earth was covered by water and it broke through the water. You have uh, the, the baby breaks through its mother's water. Jesus came up out of the water in the uh, immersion, the tevila, uh, the, the baptism, and he breaks through the water and a new life is spoken upon him. And he was always the Messiah, but now he's recognized and acknowledged to the world as the Son of God. And this, this concept of him telling the disciples after 40 days of walking the earth uh, that he's going to send this, this, this helper, this paraclete, right, in the form of the Holy Spirit. This is a monumental point in Christianity. This is a monumental point. This is a watershed moment. But people will celebrate Pentecost, but yet not celebrate the spirit that came with Pentecost. So it's like celebrating your birthday, uh, but not receiving a gift or a cake or blowing out candles or having a song. It, it's just, it's a celebration without any, um, anything tangible associated with it. And as a, a Jewish believer, it's very confusing to me. How do you separate out the gift that was given at Pentecost? How do you not receive that gift, but yet you celebrate the day, you celebrate the event, you see uh, um, a great outpouring of God, but yet deny the power, and this was exactly what got the Pharisees condemned. Uh, this was actually the unpardonable sin, was the third commandment, taking the Lord's name in vain, translate that blasphemy in the Holy Spirit, and it goes on to say, you shall not be found guiltless. Well, they accused him of casting out demons in the name of Beelzebub. And he said, you can say whatever you want about the Son of Man, but if you blaspheme or deny the power of the Holy Spirit, then that cannot be forgiven. Uh, this is critical. This is a, a huge watershed moment in the Christian experience. Well, it, it is, you know, and when you look at the New Testament, there are three different words that describe the relationship of the Holy Spirit to me and to you. And one the Holy Spirit's in me, which happens in salvation when I invite Jesus in as my Lord and Savior. Mark, let me, let me stop you there. We're having some audio difficulty. We're going to cut to a break and see if we can't, and over the break, get this thing cleared up. We're talking with uh, Mark Volkler and Charity Berkman Kayembe, authors of a new book, Overflow of the Spirit, How to Release His Gifts in Every Area of Your Life. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, host of Revealing the Truth, Revealing the Bible, and Revealing Prophecy, seen every week on the Igniting Nation Broadcasting Network. 
Our daily on-demand programming is available on our Apple and Android apps and on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Android TV. We broadcast live Monday through Friday through our apps on our website, IgnitingNation.com, and on Facebook Live. You can listen daily on our audio platforms on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, and iHeart. Our lineup of best-selling authors bring you the most in-depth biblical insights into the most pressing issues of our time, including prophecy, Israel, spiritual warfare, and a wide variety of contemporary Christian issues impacting the body of Messiah around the globe. If you missed the live show, you can always catch up on the Igniting Nation YouTube channel. Follow us on social media and join us as we endeavor to heal the nations with the Word of God. With today's smartphone technology, news, information, sports, and entertainment is widely available and almost unbounded. But what about the information that believers in Yeshua are looking for? Well, now there's an app for that. Igniting a Nation now has apps available for Android and iPhone. With our app, you'll gain access to everything you would in our website, from our featured guests to our live streaming shows. Visit Google Play or the Apple Store and download Igniting a Nation's new app today. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker inviting you to study right by my side through the Biblical Truth Library. Imagine having access to over 1,000 hours of audio and video teachings available to you through our website on a subscription basis or via our Apple and Android apps on an a la carte basis. Whichever method you choose, we promise to deliver new insights into the living Word of God as seen through the eyes of a Jewish believer. If you hunger and thirst like millions around the world for a deeper walk with God and the revelation of new understanding of the Scriptures, visit IgnitingNation.com and click on the Biblical Truth Library or on any device with our free app. Don't let another day go by without receiving your heart's desire for a new depth of understanding into all of God's Word. Igniting a Nation is expanding across the globe and healing the nations with the Word of God. As we expand our television ministry, we have added new Apple and Android apps, along with new streaming platforms including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and TuneIn Radio. Your support keeps us broadcasting live interviews and teachings to cover every challenge facing a believer in these perilous yet prophetic times. In appreciation for your support, we are offering you a special gift. For any donation of $100 or more, we will send you a signed copy of Rabbi Eric Walker's best-selling biblical thriller, The Codist, and The Seven Laws of Abundant Living. You can give online via IgnitingANation.com or by check mailed to Igniting a Nation, 115 Brook Highland Cove, Birmingham, Alabama, 35242. Make sure to claim your special offer, IAN 2020. Help us keep reaching the uttermost corners of the earth with the good news of Messiah. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking with Mark Verkler and co-author Charity Verkler Kayembe authors of the new book, Overflow of the Spirit, How to Release His Gifts in Every Air of Your Life. Mark and Charity, welcome back. Good to be back with you. Yeah, Mark, before we went to break, we were talking about uh, uh, this incredible outpouring that was given that Jesus promised uh, after 40 days uh, that he was going to send. And so they anxiously awaited for what he was going to send. And when the Spirit came and fell upon them in the upper room, uh, there were signs and wonders, and there was an infilling that was palpable, was tangible, and they began to operate in uh, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and all that went with it, healing, his deliverance, his salvations, the promises that Jesus made that uh, you who believe in me and have seen what I've done, you will do even greater than this. Well, on our own, we cannot do anything but yet here he's given us the gift to operate in and so few understand it, embrace it. Uh, so how do we understand this Holy Spirit, this gift of the Holy Spirit, and kind of help us navigate in the book uh, this how-to 
manual to receiving it and then operating in it. Okay. Well, you know, I'm assuming that all of your listeners already are hungry for the Holy Spirit and and hopefully they've come through the first few barriers, which my barriers were I had to actually believe it was available because I was taught it wasn't. So I came to a point of belief. Then I came to a point of earnest desire, which you've also talked about. I, I said, I really want this. Okay. I don't even just believe it's available. I really want it. And then I said, Lord, you know, please baptize me in the Holy Spirit, which is a third requirement. We have to actually ask for it. And in the upper room, it says they were in one accord. So there's there's unity, there's love, there's harmony. I need to be in harmony with myself, with God, with those around me. I can't be full of anger and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the final thing they did there was they yielded, you know, they yielded their tongue to the Holy Spirit. And as I was writing this book, the Lord gave me a whole dream on that. He said, you're not prepared to write this yet because you you haven't focused yet on yielding sufficiently. And so I want to just talk about yielding for a moment, if that's okay. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit indwells us when we get saved. I invite Jesus into my heart, and he's in me. That's one of the three words in the New Testament for the Holy Spirit in relationship with me. He's in me. Another one, at the Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, so I can be filled. I can yield more areas of my life to God and be filled. And then the third thing was the room was filled. There was an overflow, all right, and he was resting upon them. So. Those are three distinct relationships I can have with the Holy Spirit. So how do I get to the overflow, which is when I'm speaking in tongues and I'm prophesying and I'm doing miracles? I, I believe it's a breakout of the Holy Spirit from within me. Uh, and it's because I yielded myself more fully to him. And in, in the case of tongues, I'm yielding my tongue to him. In Acts 2, 4, it says they spoke as a spirit gave them utterance. Now, when I was wanting the gift of tongues, which took me a year to get, which is disgusting because it's a free gift. It shouldn't take a year to get a free gift. But I didn't know that I had to speak because I don't think anybody told me that. You know, I, I said, Lord, I want to speak in tongues. So I asked for it and I let my tongue hang loose and I expected God would take it and move it. Well, that's not what they did in Acts 2, 4. It says they spoke as the spirit gave them utterance. So. I'm the one who's got to choose to articulate syllables, but choose not to form them myself. Let the spirit within form them. And I define the spirit within as a river that flows from the throne of God into my heart. And in this case, out through my vocal cords. And I yield my vocal cords to the river that's flowing. And so I choose to speak. I choose not to form the syllables. I choose to honor the river within me to form the syllables through flow. And whatever syllable is flowing out, I'm assuming in faith, based on the Word of God, that they're coming from the river within me. And uh, there they were. I spoke in tongues, took me, uh, it was so simple and easy, I thought, oh, for crying out loud. If I'd have known it was this easy, I could have done it a year sooner. And I was so amazed at how easy it was, I couldn't even believe it was a miracle. Till a year later, a lady, she did interpret it. Uh, we were praying in tongues at the close of a little home group session where we cast some demons out of a person. and. I worshiped in tongues for a few minutes and she said, do you know in Portuguese, that's her Ray long live Jesus. So it was a language, but it was so simple. It was so incredibly simple. And all nine manifestation of the spirit are that simple. And that is the passion and focus of our book is to teach you that don't say things like, hey, I had this great thought drop into my mind. Think internally, biblically and say, hey, the Holy Spirit just gave me a word of knowledge. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's just two different ways of verbalizing this experience of flowing thoughts and flowing pictures within you. I don't take credit for flowing thoughts. They either come from the Holy Ghost if they're good or they come from a demon if they're bad. And I'm one, I'm a vessel through whom another person flows. You know, there's many who subscribe to the gift of speaking of in tongues as an evidence of salvation if you don't manifest that gift then they question your salvation I think that puts a great deal of pressure on something that Paul says uh, is available and you should seek after the higher things uh, this was the admonition he gave that not everybody is a teacher not everybody is a prophet not everybody is but the higher gifts, we should seek after them. And this is exactly what you did. So very faithful to the assignment to seek after it and to find out 
its availability. Uh, the context of the, the, the gifts you're speaking of are for uh, twofold edification. It's an edification of the individual and an edification of the body. And when spoken in public, uh, it must have an interpretation and be a message for the edification of the body. Uh, this is something you developed in your prayer closet. Charity, what, what was it for you? For me, it is very, um, it's, it's a personal thing with Holy Spirit. It's less about his gifts and more about the giver, right? Holy Spirit, you know, the way that Holy Spirit described his gifts to me, he's just like, you know what? When I'm thinking my thoughts through you, okay, that's word of wisdom, that's word of knowledge, right? When I'm speaking through you, well, that's tongues, that's interpretation. When I'm feeling my holy kingdom godly emotions through your heart, that's discernment, that's faith. When my power and strength flow through you, oh, that's healing, that's miracles. So it's really just about living to our sacred union with God that there's not separation anymore, right? We're a new creation and our spirits are joined to Holy Spirit. We're partakers of the divine nature and we're, we're filled up with the fullness of God. And so then a oh, Holy Spirit just, he overflows our thoughts. And then it's these gifts of the spirit. He overflows our, our mouths and our hands. And that's when we experience, we call them these, these spiritual gifts, but really it's just an expression of him living his life through us. Is this something that uh, <clears throat> needs to be activated? Is it something that is dormant within every believer uh, that requires activation, it requires development, maturity? Uh, these are, are, are gifts, and so in order for one to receive the gift, must they put themselves in a position to receive the gift, or is the gift already there and they have to open it. Go ahead, Chair. Well, I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's like a gift under the Christmas tree, right? It's there, it's available, but what do we need to do? We need to unwrap the gift. So it is absolutely available to, to every single believer. We know our Heavenly Father, he's, he's a generous Father. He lavishes us extravagantly with his love and his goodness. So I kind of, I like the way, again, Holy Spirit told me, it's kind of, it's, you know, like the, the fruit of the Spirit. We don't ration them out. We don't say, oh, well, you have love, then no joy for you. You know, you have patience, so you can't have peace too. You know, we don't ration them out. And in the same way, we don't have to ration out the gifts of the Spirit because the gifts of the Spirit are in God. God is in us. That means they're all available to us. And so we just need to learn how to position ourselves to connect with the river of Holy Spirit within us. Right, God doesn't live in our heads. Um, Ephesians 3.17 says God lives in our hearts. Jesus lives in our hearts. And it's out of our innermost being flow the rivers of living water. And this he spoke of the spirit. So really, um, in order to activate these gifts, in order to unwrap these spiritual gifts that are dormant and potentially available to all of us, is just to, to not live from our heads, but to live from our hearts and our spirits um, joined to Holy Spirit. And, and just ways to just quiet ourselves down into our hearts. And so then we're aware of, we're not just consumed by this natural world, you know, over and over, God tells us, you know, look at the things that are unseen, not the things that are seen. Keep seeking the things above, set your mind on the spirit. So when we do that and we, we intentionally fix our eyes on Jesus and Holy Spirit's river within, and we're quieted down into that place, then we can we can hear um, that inaudible voice and we can see those invisible visions with our, our spiritual senses and, and more easily flow with his river. With so much disinformation, de-emphasis, confusion, sensationalism, all these things which are deterrent to the individual uh, having some uh, reluctance, if you will, or consider it to be mysterious. Uh, what advice do you have for them uh, in order to prepare themselves for the fullness of this gift operating, even 
just in their own prayer closet for their personal edification long before they even look at the next step, which would be the public edification of the body. <laughs> well, I can give you one suggestion. I read a book called Overflow of the Spirit, okay? I mean, it took me four years of confusion before I could write it because I went to my three spiritual advisors who are all spiritual charismatics, and they all disagreed on pretty much everything about the baptism and tongues. And I thought, for crying out loud, you know, I can't even get my spiritually mature advisors to agree on the basics of, of this. So I put the whole thing in the back burner. I said, God, I, fine. They, they don't agree. I don't think I know, you know. And so I, and finally the Lord brought it off the back burner and he allowed me to share it clearly. Okay. And, and, and I believe it is a very clear, very accurate, very down to earth approach. Um, it does answer one of the questions, which I'm suspecting is in your viewers' minds right now, which is, can I really have all nine? Because Charity suggested a few minutes ago that, that I could have all nine manifestation, just like I can have all nine fruit. And, and it seems like in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul is saying, you know what? To one is given this and to another is given tongues. Mm -hmm. another. And But yet if you look at Paul, so it doesn't look like we all have, we have all nine. But if you read Paul's life in the book of Acts, you're going to find there's verses saying he did all nine of them. And so now I got his life contradicting what I think he said in 1 Corinthians 12, but we don't have all nine, but I said, but Paul, you did. And um, so the Lord showed me this about 1 Corinthians 12, where he said, we don't have them all. He starts that chapter out by saying, you know what? You used to worship idols, and when, plural. And, when you, and you were an idol for the sun god and the moon god and a whole bunch of different gods up there. He said, with, with Christianity, even though there's nine different manifestations, it's the same God. It's the same God. It's the same spirit. It's one God. And he says it in six verses. He says it eight times. It's the same God who gives all nine. So his real point was there was we're not worshiping nine different gods, folks. You, know, you used to have a whole slew of idols. We've only got one God who manifests himself in nine ways. And you can manifest all nine of those, but it's the same God. And that helped me do away with a belief within me that I couldn't have all nine. Because if I would believe I can't have all nine, there's no way I'm gonna get all nine. If I believe I have all, can have all nine, I'm gonna go after all nine, which is what I've chosen to do, and which is what we suggest everyone choose to do. What's become more evident to me, <clears throat> and I'm in, uh, normally before the COVID, I'm in hundreds of churches every year speaking, uh, is that the ability to discern the spirits is incredibly lacking. That there are people that seek after knowledge, they seek after uh, wisdom, they seek after faith, they might seek after healing, uh, but this discerning of the spirit seems to be way, way down in its refinement. And this is why we're seeing uh, <coughs> Uh, a gospel being preached that's not the gospel, a Jesus that's being preached that's not Jesus, a Holy Spirit that's being preached that's not the Holy Spirit of the Bible. And Paul warned in, in his letter to Timothy that this was something that you need to be aware of, and when you see it, you are to go the other way. Uh, and we don't see people going the other way. We don't see people discerning uh, what's happening. And you, you made a statement earlier that should vex the spirit of every uh, one of the millions of people that watch this program around the world. And that is that the spirits are more actively recognized in New Age and Satanic realms than they are in the body of Christ. And this is quite confusing because there are people who are dabbling or attracted to a covert New Age uh, messaging uh, that is slowly infiltrating the body and are, are being accepted and adopted uh, within the body, which is contrary to the gospel, contrary to the Holy Spirit, and contrary to the message of Messiah in Scripture, but is more 
easily and attractively presented uh, in a way that is quote unquote more uh, easily digestible or more easily explainable or more uh, tangible to them. And uh, I, I believe it, it's because this discerning of the Spirit is dwindling uh, in such large proportion within the body. And so when it comes to the manifestation of speaking in tongues or a prayer language or uh, utterances and groanings coming out in uh, verbalized uh, and understanding the great power that the language that you and I are speaking right now <clears throat> is a language that the adversary speaks. He speaks all of our languages. Uh, the only language that uh, he cannot speak uh, and decipher is that which is when I do not know what to pray, pray in utterances and groanings and as the Spirit leads you to and out of you, out of your belly, will come this language that is not even discernible by you, but is discernible by God. And it is sacred. It is protected. It cannot be stolen from you. And so uh, <clears throat> the outline you give an overflow of the Spirit, how to release His gifts in every area of your life, I think is, is so necessary in this time for people to go back to reclaim what has always been theirs that they have neglected. It is a part of their inheritance is a part of their gifting, and they have not been taught well, uh, and the seminaries don't teach it well. Therefore, you only teach what you learn, and you only repeat that. Uh, Jesus even said that. I only say what I heard my father say. I only do what I saw my father do. Uh, so it's life-changing. Uh, it took you a long time. Should it take me that long? No, no. I, what takes me a year to learn, I can teach to anybody. In, I mean, they can master the same skill in three months. If you have a good mentor and a good coach in front of you, and you work together in a team, because one puts a thousand to fly, two puts ten thousand. So if you team up, you're going to grow ten times faster. So I say to people, you know, you take you take one of these books, like a book on how to hear God's voice or overflow the Spirit, and you team up. I don't care if it's on Skype or Zoom or in a home group, and you say, we're going to practice this together for the next 6, 8, 10, 12 weeks, you will have mastered the skill within 12 weeks of what it took me a year or longer to learn. I guarantee it. We've taught a million people how to hear God's voice already through the four keys to hearing God's voice. So, so what I'm saying has a lot of evidence behind it that we can show you. <clears throat> Charity, in your experience, what is the greatest roadblock, the greatest barrier to people being able to receive this? I think one of the greatest roadblocks for people receiving, you know, the baptism in the spirit is lack of teaching. Um, Dad already, you know, hit on that, that they're just, you know, waiting for Holy Spirit to like wag their tongue around in their mouths and they don't realize, oh, I need to actually speak. And then Holy Spirit gives the utterance. So it's the the role that we play in that miracle, just, you know, the example of Peter walking on the water, right? He had to climb out of the boat with his own two legs, and that's him doing something, just like we have to speak. And then, oh, then God's power, Holy Spirit, held him and let him walk on the water. That was the miraculous part of it. So in the same way, when we pray in tongues, it's, it's us doing something and Holy Spirit doing something. And so we we can partner with him in that, and, and that's how we can release it. So that's that's for the, the gift of speaking in tongues, but that's really for, for all of the gifts in the same way that we just yield our tongue to Holy Spirit and then, oh, that's, you know, speaking in tongues, that's the same way we can yield our minds and have the word of wisdom and word of knowledge. We can yield our hearts and then we can have that, that faith or that discernment and we can, you know, yield our hands and his power can flow through us. So again, it's just, again, that's yielding, that living into that, that union with God. You know, in hearing you speak, I find out how spoiled I am that when I came to faith 25 years ago, 
that I came to faith in a uh, very spirit-filled Messianic congregation. So I went from the Orthodox synagogue to the Messianic synagogue, came to faith in a Messianic synagogue. I've never been a part of the quote-unquote church, church. Um, and uh, I came to faith on a Saturday, and Tuesday I was a Bible study. Wednesday night I was at healing, deliverance, and infilling of the Holy Spirit service. So that was my baptism into the Holy Spirit. Five days after I came to the Lord, uh, I began operating in healing and deliverance. Uh, have have uh, uh, operated that way for 25 years as the norm, not thinking anything of it as being unusual. I, I felt it to be quite biblically a part of every believer's experience until I came up against uh, this look that I would get. But uh, I will tell you that uh, the greatest hunger is somebody who has a diagnosis uh, from a doctor. Uh, they're very hungry to want to receive <laughs> the gift of healing. And most often it comes with a word of knowledge. And that word of knowledge is going to reveal exactly what is behind that particular illness, illness or disease. Uh, <clears throat> you talk about people uh, that, you've, that you've worked with in the book. You tell their stories. Uh, we only have about uh, two minutes left in this segment. Uh, is there one story in particular that jumps out at you that is so provocative, so profound, that it would provoke our audience to jealousy to say, I want that, and I'm going to go out and get overflow of the Spirit. Well, we do have a whole chapter in the book, you're right, about um, from one of my friends who is a, a public high school teacher, and he flows in all nine gifts of the Spirit in his public high school. And so we're like, okay, if he can do this in that space, you can do it anywhere. And, and one of the awesome stories, and this was just a few weeks after he was baptized in Holy Spirit, he really didn't know what he was doing, but there was a girl, one of his students in the high school, and she just had this look. Holy Spirit showed her, um, showed him that she was demonized, right? She had this spirit of rebellion, and he didn't even know what to do with that. But then God told him, you can take authority over that in my name. So just under his breath, he's, he said, Spirit, while I am here in this classroom, you need to be quiet. And so this girl in his classroom was very quiet. But in all of the other classrooms, she started disrupting everything. There was chaos. The other students and teachers, they were concerned about her. One day, this teacher, Brian, who had prayed that she not manifest in his classroom as long as he's there, he was out of the classroom for a meeting, okay? And she full-on manifested. She is like throwing herself against the walls, manifesting on the floor, you know, I'm free, okay? And everyone told him this when he came back and, and he realized, oh my goodness, okay, there was something to that. And then as soon as he came back, it was quiet again. And so there was peace again and there was to, able to be a learning environment again. So that's how like the gifts of the spirit can flow practically in our everyday lives. Like, oh, as a school teacher in a public school, this is what it looks like. Give you a vision for this is how these spiritual gifts that look great on paper in the Bible, this is what they can look like in your actual everyday life, on the job, in school. You can make a difference when you flow with Holy Spirit and, and honor what he's showing you. Well, I can bear witness as someone who has received uh, miraculous healing. Uh, I was 70% deaf and going 100% deaf and hands were laid on me and my hearing was completely restored. I've laid hands on people and cancer has been healed. Uh, a paraplegic got out of a wheelchair. Uh, I've seen it operate and uh, it is available to every believer and you are shortchanging yourself in the fullness of your walk. If the gift of salvation was the end all and be all to life, then the moment you said yes to Jesus, you would be taken out of here. You were left behind so that you could impact the world for Messiah. As a matter of fact, he says to his disciples in Luke 10, 19, I give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing whatsoever can harm you. 
That is because of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In your own strength, you can do nothing. But in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you have all authority has been given to you from heaven. Jesus said it. You will do everything I did and even greater than this. If you want to receive that gift of the Holy Spirit, read this book, Overflow of the Spirit, How to Release His Gifts in Every Area of Your Life by Mark Verkler and Charity Verkler Kayembe. You can click on the link on IgnitingAnation.com on today's broadcast calendar and click on their name. It says, Love the Interview. Get the book or visit them at their website of uh, cwgministries.org. Mark and Charity, thank you for sharing this with us. I think it is an incredible step in the right direction to empower every believer to operate fully in the gifts that they need to claim. They have their name on it. It's just waiting for them to open the package. Thank you for sharing this. Amen. Thank you for having us. God Thank bless you. So we're, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll bring you the next edition of Revealing the Truth. <laughs> 